Hi, this is Janet. Today we're going to discuss health inequalities and the role of telehealth to improve on those equities that are extremely necessary. Health is a human right. And first and foremost, we have to really understand what health is. It's a multidimensional concept that goes beyond mere absence of illness. So health is more than just not being sick, and it has a multidimensional effect. So the way we determine health is actually a construct that different people have used different ways to do it. This is the best way I feel like that has been done. So the way they define determinants of health is how, what is healthcare, well, that is truly what is medical care and how you're gonna deliver that. But more importantly, first and foremost, you have to understand how do you define a good health outcome? It is, depends on two different things. One is length of life, and then the other one is quality of life, which is about 50% each. So those are the two main outcomes that you're looking for as a whole when you determine and de define health outcomes. And health outcome is more than what we think about just access to care. As a matter of fact, only 20% in it is about health care and access to care. 30% is health behaviors, 10% is physical environments, and then socioeconomic factors play a significant role in, in health inequalities in general. As a matter of fact, this has been said before, but your zip code matters more than your genetic code because the way everything else around you, your work status, your education, your family, your income, your community, and all the physical you know, uh, essences around you also is impacted by how your health is going to be. Because if you're in a lower zip code, inner city, the air quality can be bad. The water quality can be bad. There could be more lead pen because there would be older buildings. So the, clearly, your zip code, unfortunately, is more important sometimes in, in your overall health than your actual access to health care. And then people victim shame, unfortunately, a lot that, you know, that this is because of these bad behaviors. Believe it or not, it's only 30% that it accounts for, like lack of exercise, tobacco, diet, etc. It is extremely important to keep that into context because, it has, as we said, health is made up of multiple different factors and these social determinants are interconnected. So where does telehealth comes in? The telehealth is clearly an important point to give access, right? I mean, clinical care is important. One of the issues is that when you have lower social determinants of health for any reason whatsoever, your access of care to actually becomes very low. And access of care is just a point of entry, a point of cross the barrier to get help. And that help could not just be just wound infection or getting antibiotics for pneumonia. It is actually to have a proper impact on how you can access care in yourself. And that's where, you know, in the age of telehealth, broadband access is such a key thing. It is now as important as public utility like electricity and heat. It is now a public health issue. So anyone and everyone should have access to broadband and this should be a national priority. And that's one way I keep coming to this point is that telehealth is not just medical care. It is not just mere absence of illness. It is basically when you are providing care, you can actually identify more things than you, even the person comes in, in clinic because the patient is at home. You can look at the surroundings. You can see if the patient is actually safe in their house. You can see if the patient has adequate space, water and air, etc. So when you have telehealth, you are actually in their own house without visiting it. This is amazing. You can actually take care of these patients on a whole complete basis and provide them appropriate care not just medical wise but also non-medical social support nutrition support you know child support whatever those things may be you can have a flow through of system that can help these patients as human beings in general as well so that's where the key promise of telehealth comes in the first and foremost is access access to the timely care and access to value care, right? Correct? I mean, that's basically it because if you have to provide value, you can actually go into their own house. They don't have to drive. They don't have to take the bus. They don't have to take the time off. It saves them a lot of money, the patient itself. And also you are getting in their room the amount of time you and the patient spends, you get a lot more out of it. So there's just by the definition of the visit itself, it creates a lot of value. And of course, the downstream revenue benefits are extremely well because you can give access timely. And if you can, that thing is solved with a small dose of antibiotics or asthma med inhaler or anything as compared to, you know, patient getting too sick, coming into the hospital in an ER and going to the ICU. So there's a tremendous amount of value with telehealth.
and then you can actually access allied care as I just said before you can have specialty care a wound nurse go to their house we do that already right the patient is going to go to the hospital then the ER and the ICU and then the wound care is going to go why not we do it the decrease the the inpatient side of things directly provide care to the patient where it's needed same thing if you need care specialists like lactation consultations simple stuff that we again do that unfortunately only via inpatient care we can provide this all via tele and this can significantly change the way the patient has their health outcomes and then social work i mean they're great heroes and again again you know other kinds of therapy speech therapy physical therapy occupational therapy nutrition consult all this can be done via telehealth and this will be a significant improvement not just providing medical care but whole holistic care in general and then these can go into analytics right i mean if you are seeing these patients they can be pumped into a po population database like for example if they are having multiple asthma attacks 10 more than you know one neighborhood to another this needs to be investigated if there is any air quality issue in the whole neighborhood what's going on so these analytics can show up as an early warning sign and this was where artificial intelligence and telehealth will be extremely important because all this data needs to be turned into knowledge and then once that knowledge is there the wisdom for the policymakers can be there thank you so much